Lawmakers grill Ilocos Norte Governor Amy Marcos over her supposed gross negligence in the purchase of motor vehicles using 66.45 million pesos in local tobacco funds. Marcos on Tuesday appeared before the House Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability to serve the subpoena issued against her. Documents obtained by the panel showed there were red flags in the transactions, including the use of cash advances, missing documents, and improper bidding process. Oriental Mindoro Representative Doy Lietzon asks Marcos why she authorized the purchases when there were indications of anomalies. Marcos says she did not notice any irregularities at the time. She adds she trusted the concerned departments under the provincial government to follow the right procedures. But Lia Chon calls out Marcos for signing off on the transactions, saying there was gross negligence on her part because the transactions were done in undue haste. Still on Marcos, the Ilocos Norte governor retracts her allegation that the Liberal Party bribed lawmakers with a 100 million peso fund to bar her from attending the House probe. Majority leader Rodolfo Farinas asks Marcos who her source was when she told the Manila Times that a 100 million peso fund from Yellow Forces was being offered to legislators to stop her from attending the probe. Yellow is the color associated with the LP. Marcos initially refuses to divulge the name of her source, but Farinas threatens to cite her in contempt for putting a bad mark on all members of Congress. For that, I apologize and withdraw the statement. It's my mere suspicion. And given that the source is uncertain, I withdraw the accusation to the integrity and the honor of the House that 100 million circulated. Hindi po totoo yun at ako'y uh, nagpapaumanin kung nasaktan ang ibang miyembro ng ating uh, Congress. The House Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability finally grants freedom to the six Ilocos Norte officials it detained last May. House Majority Leader Rodolfo Farinas on Tuesday asks the panel to release Ilocos 6 from detention during the probe into the alleged misuse of 66.45 million pesos worth of Ilocos Norte Tobacco funds. This, after the officials admitted to signing documents for the purchase of motor vehicles. Farinas says, quote, You know, it's probably better that you continue living here. Your memory improved. The House panel previously cited the Ilocos Norte officials in contempt and detained them on May 29 after they gave dismissive answers when Farinas presented copies of documents bearing their signatures on the purchase of motor vehicles. Prior to Ilocos Norte officials' admission, Governor Amy Marcos was grilled by the committee over her gross negligence in authorizing the motor vehicle transactions despite several red flags. The six Ilocos Norte officials earlier secured a ruling from the Court of Appeals ordering their provisional release, but the House leadership refused to grant it. Marcus then filed an omnibus motion before the Supreme Court, asking the justices to take over the detention case and compel the House to release the officials. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi is pushing for joint development in the disputed West Philippine Sea. Wang is in Manila for a rare overnight trip at the invitation of the Philippine government. He says, quote, In waters where there is overlapping of maritime rights and interests, if one party goes for unilateral development, then the other party will take the same actions, and that might complicate the situation at sea. He adds, quote, That might lead to tensions, and as the end result, nobody might be able to develop the resources. Wang makes the remarks after being asked for details about President Rodrigo Duterte's statement that Filipinos can soon expect joint exploration for oil in the West Philippine Sea. Before this, Philippine Foreign Secretary Alan Cayetano and Wang held a bilateral meeting and signed a Memorandum of Understanding for closer cooperation. The Supreme Court on Tuesday dismisses petitions asking it to compel Congress to convene on martial law. The SC says Congress is constitutionally required to convene on martial law only if it will revoke or extend the proclamation. The consolidated petitions ask the SC to clarify the guidelines on proclaiming martial law, saying the Constitution requires both chambers to convene and vote jointly at the onset of a proclamation. Supreme Court spokesman Ted Te says, quote, Article 7, Section 18 imposes no such duty on Congress to convene, such duty to convene and vote being limited to instances where Congress intends to revoke or extend any proclamation of martial law or suspension of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus. 
The High Court issues its decision three days after the House of Representatives and the Senate convene in a joint session to decide on President Rodrigo Duterte's request for a five-month extension of martial law in Mindanao. In a joint vote of 261 to 18, Congress granted the request and extended martial law in Mindanao until December 31, 2017. The petitioner's lawyer and former Solicitor General Florin Hilbay says, quote, The court's decision is a step away from transparency and accountability, a path that Congress had already taken when it extended martial law. United States President Donald Trump's war of words with his Attorney General and one-time ally Jeff Sessions escalates Monday, raising speculation the President may be preparing the ground to replace him. In a tweet, Trump asks why Sessions was not investigating 2016 election rival Hillary Clinton. He tweets, quote, So why aren't the committees and investigators, and of course our beleaguered AG, looking into crooked Hillary's crimes and Russia relations? U.S. presidents normally avoid being seen as influential on ongoing or possible investigations at all costs. Trump criticized Sessions last week for stepping back from issues related to the probe. Sessions recused himself from the Russia investigations because of his role in Trump's campaign. He earlier failed to tell the Senate during his confirmation hearings about contacts he had with Russia ambassador in Washington. In a New York Times interview, Trump said he would never have hired Sessions had he known he would recuse himself.